Hello viewers. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more new updates. In today's video we are going to discuss about Structural Analysis 50 Important Questions and Answer Question 1 Name force methods to analyze the statically indeterminate structures. Column Analogy Method Flexibility Matrix Method Method of Consistent Deformation Theorem of Least Work Question 2 Define degree of kinematic indeterminacy, or, degree of freedom, it is defined as the least no of independent displacements required to define the deformed shape of a structure. There are two types of DOF. Joint type DOF, nodal type DOF. Question 3 Write the general steps of the consistent deformation method, by removing the restraint in the direction of redundant forces, released structure, which is a determinate structure, is obtained. In this released structure, displacements are obtained in the direction of the redundant forces. Then the displacement due to each redundant force is obtained and the conditions of displacement compatibility are imposed to get additional equations. Solution for these equations gives the values of redundant forces. Then the released structure subjected to these known forces gives the forces and moments in the structure. Question 4 Differentiate external redundancy and internal redundancy. In pin-jointed frames, redundancy caused by too many members is called internal redundancy. Then there is external redundancy caused by too many supports. When we introduce additional supports members, we generally ensure more safety and more work, in analysis. Question 5 What are the different methods used to analyze indeterminate structures? Finite element method, flexibility matrix method, diffness matrix method. Question 6 Why to provide redundant members? To maintain alignment of two members during construction, to increase stability during construction, to maintain stability during loading, Example, to prevent buckling of compression members. To provide support if the applied loading is changed. To act as backup members in case some members fail or require strengthening. Analysis is difficult but possible. Question 7 What are statically indeterminate structures? Give example, if the conditions of statics i.e. Sigma H equals zero, Sigma V equals zero and Sigma M equals zero alone are not sufficient to find either external reactions or internal forces in a structure. The structure is called a statically indeterminate structure. Question 8 Define consistent deformation method. This method is used for the analysis of indeterminate structure. This method is suitable when the number of unknown is 1 or 2. When the number of unknown becomes more, it is a lengthy method. Question 9 Define primary structure. A structure formed by the removing the excess or redundant restraints from an indeterminate structure making it statically determinate is called primary structure. This is required for solving indeterminate structures by flexibility matrix method. Question 10 What is the effect of temperature on the members of a statically determinate plane truss? 
indeterminate structures temperature changes do not create any internal stresses. The changes in lengths of members may result in displacement of joints. But these would not result in internal stresses or changes in external reactions. Question 11 Write the formulae for degree of indeterminacy, two-dimensional and jointed truss, two truss, equals plus, two, two-dimensional rigid frames plane rigid frames, two frame, equals three plus, three. Three-dimensional space truss, three truss, equals plus, three. Three-dimensional space frame, three frame, equals six plus, six, where M equals number of members. R equals number of reactions. J equals number of joints. Question 12 Define internal and external indeterminacy. Internal indeterminacy is the excess number of internal forces present in a member that make a structure indeterminate. External indeterminacy, EI, is the excess number of external reactions in the member that make a structure indeterminate. Indeterminacy, I, equals internal indeterminacy plus external indeterminacy external indeterminacy equals RE, internal indeterminacy equals IEI where, R equals number of support reactions and E equals equilibrium conditions E equals 3, plane frames, and E equals 6, space frames. Question 13 Define degree of indeterminacy. The excess number of reactions take make a structure indeterminate is called degree of indeterminacy. Indeterminacy is also called degree of redundancy. Indeterminacy consists of internal and external indeterminacies. It is denoted by the symbol I Degree of redundancy, I, equals internal indeterminacy plus external indeterminacy. Question 14 What are the requirements to be satisfied while analyzing a structure? Equilibrium condition Compatibility condition Force displacement condition Question 15 Differentiate the statically determinate structures and statically indeterminate structures. Serial number Statically determinate structures Statically indeterminate structures 1. Conditions of equilibrium are sufficient to analyze the structure. Conditions of equilibrium are insufficient to analyze the structure. 2. Bending moment and shear force is independent of material and cross-sectional area. Bending moment and shear force is dependent of material and independent of cross-sectional area. 3. No stresses are caused due to temperature change and lack of fit. Stresses are caused due to temperature change and lack of fit. 4. Extra conditions like compatibility of displacement serenity required to analyze the structure. Extra conditions like compatibility of displacements are required to analyze the structure along with the equilibrium equations. Question 16 Distinguish between plane truss and plane frame. Plane frames are two-dimensional structures constructed with straight elements connected together by rigid and or hinged connections. Frames are subjected to loads and reactions that lie in the plane of the structure. If all the members of a truss and the applied loads lie in a single plane, 
The truss is called a plain truss. Question 17 What is meant by cambering technique in structures? Cambering is a technique applied on site, in which a slight upward curve is made in the structure beam during construction, so that it will straighten out and attain the straight shape during loading. This will considerably reduce the downward deflection that may occur at later stages. Question 18 Give the procedure for unit load method. Find the forces P1, P2, in all the members due to external loads. Remove the external loads and apply the unit vertical point load at the joint if the vertical deflection is required and find the stress. Apply the equation for vertical and horizontal deflection. Question 19 What are the assumptions made in unit load method? The external and internal forces are in equilibrium. Supports are rigid and no movement is possible. The materials are strained well within the elastic limit. Question 20 Why is it necessary to compute deflections in structures? Computation of deflection of structures is necessary for the following reasons. If the deflection of a structure is more than the permissible, the structure will not look aesthetic and will cause psychological upsetting of the occupants. Excessive deflection may cause cracking in the materials attached to the structure. For example, if the deflection of a floor beam is excessive, the floor finishes and partition walls supported on the beam may get cracked and unserviceable. Question 21 Define unit load method The external load is removed and the unit load is applied at the point, where the deflection or rotation is to found. Question 22 What are the conditions of equilibrium? The three conditions of equilibrium are the sum of horizontal forces, vertical forces, and moments at any joint should be equal to zero. i.e., sigma h equals zero, sigma v equals zero, Sigma M equals zero question 23 define trust beam. A beam strengthened by providing ties and struts is known as trust beams. Question 24 distinguish between pin jointed and rigidly jointed structure. Serial number. Pin jointed structure. Rigidly jointed structure. 1. The joints permit change of angle between connected members. The members connected at a rigid joint will maintain the angle between them even under deformation due to loads. 2. The joints are incapable of transferring any moment to the connected members and vice versa. Members can transmit both forces and moments between themselves through the joint. 3. The pins transmit forces between connected members by developing shear. Provision of rigid joints normally increases the redundancy of the structures. Question 25 Define deck and through type truss. 
A deck type is trusses one in which the road is at the top chord level of the trusses. We would not see the trusses when we ride on the roadway. A through type truss is one in which the road is at the bottom chord level of the trusses. When we travel on the roadway, we would see the web members of the trusses on our left and right. That gives us the impression that we are going through the bridge. Question 26 What is meant by lack of fit in a truss? One or more members in a pin jointed statically indeterminate frame may be a little shorter or longer than what is required. Such members will have to be forced in place during the assembling. These are called members having lack of fit. Internal forces can develop in a redundant frame, without external loads, due to lack of fit. Question 27 What is meant by settlement of supports? Support sinks mostly due to soil settlement. Rotation of fixed ends can happen either because of soil settlement or upheaval of horizontal or inclined fixed ends. Fixed end moments induced in beam ends because of settlement or rotation of supports. Question 28 What is a rigid joint? The members connected at a rigid joint will maintain the angle between them even under deformation due to loads. Members can transmit both forces and moments between themselves through the joint. Provision of rigid joints normally increases the redundancy of the structures. Question 29 Write down the assumptions made in portal method. The point of contraflexure in all the members lies at their middle points. Horizontal shear taken by each interior column is double the horizontal shear taken by each of exterior column. Question 30 Write down the assumptions made in cantilever method. The point of contraflexure in all the members lies at their middle points. The direct stress or axial stress in the columns due to horizontal forces are directly proportional to their distance from the centroidal vertical axis of the frame. Question 31 Differentiate symmetry and anti-symmetry frames. Symmetry frame. Anti-symmetry frame. For symmetric loading, symmetric quantities like bending moment, displacements are symmetrical about the centroidal vertical axis. For anti-symmetric loading, symmetric quantities like bending moment, displacements are zero at the point of centroidal vertical axis. Anti-symmetric quantities like slope and shear force are zero at the point of centroidal vertical axis. Anti-symmetric quantities like slope and shear force are distributed about the centroidal vertical axis. Question 32 What is meant by thermal stress? Thermal stresses are stresses developed in a structure member due to change in temperature. Normally, Determinate structures do not develop thermal stresses. They can absorb changes in lengths and consequent displacements without developing stresses. Question 33 Differentiate perfect and imperfect trusses. 
The frame which is composed of such members, which are just sufficient to keep the frame in equilibrium, when the frame is supporting an external load, is known as perfect frame. Hence for a perfect frame, the number of joints and number of members are given by, equals 2 3. A frame in which number of members and number of joints are not given by, equals 2 3 is known as imperfect frame. This means that number of members in an imperfect frame will be either more or less than 2 3. Question 34 Write the difference between deficient and redundant frames. If the number of members in a frame are less than 2 3, then the frame is known as deficient frame. If the number of members in a frame are more than 2 3, then the frame is known as redundant frame. Question 35 Write any two important assumptions made in the analysis of trusses. The frame is a perfect frame. The frame carries load at the joints. All the members are pin joined. Question 36 What are the assumptions made in slope deflection method? This method is based on the following simplified assumptions. All the joints of the frame are rigid, i.e., the angle between the members at the joints does not change, when the members of frame are loaded. Between each pair of the supports the beam section is constant. Question 37 Define fixed end moment. The moments at the fixed joints of loaded member are called fixed end moment. Question 38 What are the moments induced in a beam member, when one end is given a unit rotation? the other end being fixed. What is the moment at the near end called? When equals 1 equals 4 equals 2 is the stiffness of a bed B. Question 39 Define the term sway. Sway is the lateral movement of joints in a portal frame due to the unsymmetrical in dimensions, loads, moments of inertia, and conditions, etc. Sway can be prevented by Unyielding supports provided at the beam level as well as geometric or load symmetry. About vertical axis. Question 40 What are the situations wherein sway will occur in portal frames? Eccentric or unsymmetrical loading. Unsymmetrical geometry. Different end conditions of the column. Non-uniform section of the members. Unsymmetrical settlement of supports. A combination of the above. Question 41 What are the symmetric and anti-symmetric quantities in structural behavior? When a symmetrical structure is loaded with symmetrical loading, the bending moment and deflected shape will be symmetrical about the same axis. Bending moment and deflection are symmetrical quantities.
Question 42 How many slope deflection equations are available for a two-span continuous beam? There will be four numbers of slope deflection equations are available for a two-span continuous beam. Question 43 What are the quantities in terms of which the unknown moments are expressed in slope deflection method? In slope deflection method, unknown moments are expressed in terms of slope, theta, deflection, delta, Question 44 How do you account for sway in slope deflection method for portal frames? Because of sway, there will be rotations in the vertical members of a frame. This causes moments in the vertical members. To account for this, besides the equilibrium, one more equation namely shear equation connecting the joint moments is used. Question 45 State the limitations of slope deflection method. It is not easy to account for varying member sections. It becomes very inconvenient when the unknown displacements are large in number. This method is advantageous only for the structures with small kinematic indeterminacy. The solution of simultaneous equation makes the method tedious for annual computations. Question 46 Why slope deflection method is called a displacement method? In slope deflection method, displacements, like slopes and displacements, are treated as unknowns and hence the method is a displacement method. Question 47 Define flexural rigidity of beams. The product of Young's modulus, E, and moment of inertia, I, is called flexural rigidity, EI, of beams. The unit is NMM2. Question 48 Define constant strength beam. If the flexural rigidity, EI, is constant over the uniform section, it is called constant strength beam. Question 49 Define continuous beam. A continuous beam is one, which is supported on more than two supports. For usual loading on the beam hogging, negative, moments causing convexity upwards at the supports and sagging, positive, Moments causing concavity upwards occur at mid-span. Question 50 What are the advantages of continuous beam over simply supported beam? The maximum bending moment in case of continuous beam is much less than in case of simply supported beam of same span carrying same loads. In case of continuous beam, the average bending moment is lesser and hence lighter materials of construction can be used to resist the bending moment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon.